nice, nice to speak to you again. Thank you a lot, Dayuda, uh -huh. to ask you three questions, three quick questions, because the topic of the conference is waking up. Uh -huh out of the cave, waking up out of the cave. And I would like to ask to you, the first one is, what is the meaning for you of waking up? Or what do you sound to you the term waking up? Okay, that's a good, good question. Waking up from what? I think waking up from a mistaken idea of what the world is and what we are. A mechanistic, materialistic idea based on the Newtonian system in which there is matter and energy but there is no such thing as, as mind or consciousness. Those are just epiphenomena. So that is a wrong paradigm. It's an it's a, a obsolete paradigm by now, in terms of new sciences and new discoveries. We find now that, that consciousness is a basic element of the universe, just as important as matter and as energy. It's more important, in fact, than matter, because matter is an epiphenomenon in itself. The truth is information and energy in the world. They're all informed energy configurations in terms of the new quantum physics. So waking up means pulling out of the illusion of a materialist mechanistic universe in which the only, only reality is matter and energy and motion. Yeah, you can talk about why this is so t important. I think it's just because, you can I say, because we, our survival depends on our better concept, better understanding of how who we who, who we are, how the, what the world is, and how we relate to the world. As it is, we are at a dead end street. We are moving toward more and more unsustainable conditions. So waking up means moving back out of the cave, to say the Plato's paradigm, Plato's uh, metaphor for it. We are not no longer looking only at the shadows on the wall of the cave. We are to look at, at the real world. We have to turn around and see the origin of the fire that casts the light on us and become more closer to it, become one with it. Perfect. And I, I wanted to call the conference Waking Up because in my vision, exactly what you are saying about the new paradigm, in my vision, everything is ready to this. And my concern is, but why the human being is not aware of this? It's so simple this vision of uh, of the new paradigm and the reason why person seems to be dreaming seems to be not aware of this in your vision well, I think, which is the, the main reason of this i think we got seduced so to speak we got too too too, too much greater uh, promise and allure the idea that we can now calculate everything in terms of the mo motion of matter the idea of 250 years ago already from the Newtonian synthesis, that we can make that as a basis of our, of our world, because then mechanistically we can manipulate the world. We can make the world serve our own interests and, and, and wishes. And that is a very seductive, very seemingly promising idea. It's false because it doesn't work like that, but we have, uh, we have allowed ourselves by humanity, I mean, already 250 years ago and ever more in the 20th century, late 20th century, and now in the first decades of the 21st century, we have allowed ourselves to search for our immediate satisfaction by means of considering the world as a passive background for our actions, for the actions of living beings. Living, living beings can manipulate the world around them as they wish. And so this catchy idea has seduced us into manipulating the, the world, manipulating our own body, as you know, mind, by trying just to, to make our wishes work as though the world would be a simple mechanism. It's a very complex mechanism, and it's more than a mechanism. It's a living being, it's, it's not, not going to be reduced to, uh, to a machine. But why this happened? I think I'm speculating, and I'm just saying that probably because it would be such a, an immediate satisfaction if we could just make the world work like we make a bicycle work, according to our immediate wishes. So we develop the whole world, which is a synthetic world, a mechanistic world, which is a shadow world in Plato's, Plato's metaphor, um, because the shadows we can manipulate. And the real world, of course, is much more complex, but we can re waking up means that we are not separate from the real world. The real world uh, is is us. 
We are in the world and we are part of the world and the world is part of us. This is a very different paradigm from the idea of an external manipulator who can create machines and algorithms just to make the world obey his or her wishes. May I ask you a personal question? Means in your experience, in your life experience, life experience, what was the most important experiences for waking up? Well, I, I was never really completely asleep. <laughs> so it was difficult for me to tell you how to wake up. Because I was, I had a fortune to be involved professionally in, in my life, very basically involved in, in music. And so I've always lived in a world which is above and beyond the everyday appearance world. I was always living in a, in a deeper dimension, the dimension of, of art, a dimension of wholeness and coherence. That is, is, was always part of my experience. I could never agree. I could, I could never see myself being part of an everyday mechanistic world in which everybody just seeks their own advantage and separates from each other. I always felt that the world is much more like a whole. And I started writing my thoughts uh, in my early 20s, maybe 22, 23. Then uh, I, I wrote around these ideas. So it was very much in my mind also there. It, I was not taught this formally in a university course. It's something that I experienced. I used my university training of all this to illuminate why this is happening and how this is happening. But the origins, the meaning of what is happening has come to me intuitively or already from my childhood onwards. There's no single process of waking up. You know, it was a waking up was not, it was not a sound, become, becoming more and more conscious of this way of the rationalizing it and become, making it conscious, you know. And uh, being this a sort of a legacy panel for young people, which could be a message for the young people, it could be the tools for awakening, a suggestion for awakening for the, the young generation. Well, enter into yourself, to himself, herself, to each person, becoming more aware of their own intuitive impulses, drives, and visions, and recognizing that the world is more than just what appears to our eyes and ears and our sensory organs, that there is a deeper dimension in the world, allowing the sense of wholeness and oneness and love. These are the new keywords, allowing our sense for these things to take hold of our mind, and take hold of our imagination, coming back to ourselves. Because when we feel, when we want to have any assurance that this is not just fantasy, we can turn to the new sciences, to quantum physics, to the new biology, uh, new psychology, to the ideas, for example, of Stanislav Grof. I had the pleasure to work on the last few days with Stanislav Grof on a paper that he wrote on the on, on the concept of the of the quantum holo field. This is a, another dimension which was neglected by the everyday reality in which young people just seek their own immediate advantages in terms of fame and satisfaction, power over other people. And this is carried forward in the business world and in politics. So to, to go beyond the everyday world, to find yourself, that means following Gandhi's advice, be the change you want to see in the world. This is my advice is to try to be that change. Try to find the authority for being what you can be and you should become, not from the outside, not by banks and, and manufacturing companies and political parties and so on, but finding it in your own living experience. Experience, if you allow experience to, to inform you, you will find this deeper dimension. It's there in nature, if you experience nature, it's there in all forms of art, in music, <clears throat> in, in poetry, in everything. The deep dimension is always present. You can experience it, and then you can turn to the new sciences if you want validation, uh, re recognition that this is a, a, a real affair. This is the best idea that we can have of the true nature of the world. So my suggestion is go back to yourself, which means being going back to your connection with the world around you. We are part of the world and that connection, to recognize that connection is to come back, 
come back to what we were, but traditional people are still today, but indigenous people are a sense of oneness of a living nature around us. That is what has been missing, but what we, what we have dis, dis, disregarded and ignored in our concept of a mechanistic, sim, simple a kind of a material universe. It was perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay. You can use this in San Vincenzo in October. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. All, all, all the best.